Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how I created this glitch effect here. And this is something that's kind of popular within this decade here that we're currently in. And all of this, every last bit of this is vector, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, get into this, but before I do, it's important to... Uh, let you know that I'm going to be working with an asset and so if you haven't seen this video right here the thumbnail of the video is on the screen right now how to draw and color in affinity designer if you want to know how to draw and color inside of affinity designer this is the video that you need to watch right here okay but this video that you're currently watching is just teaching how to make a glitch effect now please bear with me this can get really confusing so first of all let's just take a look at the two layers that actually matter on my layers panel. I have the line work and I have my color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my line work and my color layer and I'm going to press control G in order to group them together. And I'm just going to call this anchor. Okay, actually think of an anchor, the thing that's holding the entire ship together. So we're going to be coming back to this specific group a lot throughout this entire process. Now I'm going to open up this layer and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a really big rectangle, a really big green one. Okay, and I'm going to place it into the top of the stacking order in the anchor group. All right, and I'm just going to deactivate it right now and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of really narrow rectangles and I'm going to give them a different color just simply because it makes life a little bit easier so that when I turn on this big green rectangle I can see the difference between the two of them all right okay so now I'm going to turn off the big green rectangle and I'm just going to continue making duplicates of this narrow rectangle and just kind of resize it, make it thinner, a little bit thicker. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that they are at unpredictable distances away from one another. Uh, otherwise, if it's if it looks too predictably spaced, it just doesn't look like a glitch. It, it just looks like something predictable and boring. Now, you don't want to actually pile in so many of these rectangles that you think that that's all that you'll want, okay? You just want a few of them, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these little rectangles. Not the big one, but we're going to select all of these rectangles right here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the blending mode and click on erase. Now that we have all of these rectangles selected. And what we see is a bunch of negative spaces, all right? And I actually really like the negative spaces. I, I think that there's a lot that you can do with them. This is the time where if you don't like how anything looks, you should sift things around right now. And and I like that. I like how this is looking right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down my anchor layer and I'm going to press Control J on the anchor layer so that I have two anchor layers. And so I'm going to move this new anchor layer underneath the first anchor and I'm going to rename it Left Glitch, okay? That's what it's going to be called. And now I can just open this up, scroll down to the bottom of the list of rectangles and turn on my big rectangular shape and I'm just going to select one of these rectangles above the big rectangle and select subtract and you just do that until you basically wind up eating up every single one of these thinner smaller rectangles and I like to do this one by one just simply because sometimes you can get unpredictable results if you try doing this in a, a much faster way Okay, so I have all of my rectangles eaten up, all swallowed up, and I want to show what that does is I'm going to turn off my anchor group, and this is what we got. So if I have this big rectangle selected inside of my left glitch layer or group, I'm going to scroll all the way down and click erase so that the only thing that's showing is just the things that I subtracted out of the big rectangle. Okay, so now if I turn on the anchor group, you can actually see the entire image, but it's got all these little lines going through it. I'm going to click on the left glitch layer and kind of close it down, and I'm just going to select the move tool, and then I'm going to press on the left arrow key, and that's looking kind of interesting. And so now it's time to kind of continue this process. 
So I'm going to go back to my anchor layer, and I don't want to do anything with any of these little rectangles, but I do want to grab the big rectangle. And the big rectangle, I'm going to just scroll all the way to the top of the stacking order and place it right there. In fact, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and double click this big rectangle here and call it bookmark. Okay, so we're gonna just think of the big rectangle as a bookmark, this big shape right here on the screen right now, okay? That's basically the bookmark when it's inside of the anchor layer, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to continue making a bunch of these thinner rectangles. Okay, excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these really quick here until we hit our bookmark object, press shift, and uh, select from the top all the way down of all of these thinner rectangles. And then we're going to go to blending mode and then go erase. And so now what we need to do is we need to close down our anchor layer, select the anchor layer, press control J, and move it underneath the glitch left group. All right, and so now I'm going to rename this to right glitch. All right, I'm going to open it up. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually turn off the anchor layer and I want to turn off the glitch left layer. And I want to find my bookmark rectangle and I want to see what happens when I delete all of these rectangles underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to click delete. So it deletes. So let me go back up to the left glitch. Okay, everything's still good. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep it all turned off for right now. The anchor and the left glitch layer. And I'm going to go back to my bookmark layer. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm just going to select one at a time, like with the bookmark and the rectangle above it and select subtract. Just do this one at a time with the smaller rectangles. Just let the big rectangle eat each one of these one at a time. Excellent. And now that I have nothing but this big green rectangle here, I'm going to select the blending mode, scroll all the way down and click erase. Now I'm going to turn on the anchor layer and just really quick here, I'm going to I'm going to close down my right glitch group. And I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on again. Everything looks like it's checking out. So I'm going to click on the right glitch layer and select the move tool and then start pressing on the right arrow key in order to see how this is turning out. Okay, now I, at this point I'm pretty confident everything's looking pretty good. Let me turn on the left glitch. I still have the right glitch group still selected and I can just kind of go as dramatic crazy with it as I want. So I, I put a whole lot of these in there. Uh, maybe a little bit too many, but that's how you make a glitch effect really. But if you want to add more layers of depth, you can. We still haven't made a background for this yet, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new group and put it underneath everything that's important inside of this image. And I'm going to call this background. And I'm just going to select a color for the fill. And that works out pretty good for right now. So computers, they compose all of the colors by a combination of red, green, and blue. So with the right glitch, left glitch, and anchor groups, I'm going to select all of those and press Control G, okay? And now I'm going to rename this blue. And then I'm going to press Control J, move it under the blue group, and rename it red. I'm going to press Control J and move the duplicate underneath red and rename it green. Excellent. So now that I have that accomplished, I can now go into the adjustment layer down here and go to gradient map. And with the gradient map, I select like this group at the top is blue. So I select the dark section, which is to the left, and I appoint it to a blue color and I make it rather dark. And then I go to the midtone here and I go ahead and select a blue color and I make sure that it has halfway uh, saturation, halfway lightness, and that looks good. And then go to my highlight, and I basically go really bright, almost, almost white, and full saturation. And I make sure that it's blue, and that worked out pretty good. Now with the red group, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the move tool and I'm just going to start pressing on the left arrow key and that looks pretty good. Now I can actually see some of it and I go to the adjustment layer and I go to gradient map. Now I have a crappy computer so if my computer can handle this your computer can handle this. Now already actually you could consider this to be a glitch effect right here but I want to go a step above and beyond. So we already have a red in the dark region of the gradient map, but that's not enough. We need to have this be dark, nearly black even. Well, actually, I, I'm going to actually lighten it up a little bit more than I normally do, just simply because I like how it looks in the darker regions of the image. Then I go to my mid-tone here. I select a red, put the saturation in the middle and the lightness to the middle, then go to my highlight, set it to being red, and full saturation saturation and just have it be an off-white and that looks pretty good all right now I'm going to select my green group and have the move tool and I'm going to press on the right arrow key and that's looking kind of interesting so I'm going to select the adjustment layer go to gradient map and everything needs to be green so I'm going to select the dark region green and nearly completely black maybe uh, no let's see what looks interesting Okay, I'm going to have it be kind of bright, all right? And then in the mid-tone, I'm going to make sure that it's brighter, at least for me, in my situation. Set the saturation to the same amount as the lightness and make sure that it's green. And then with the highlight section of the gradient map, I'm going to move the color to being green and have it be just an off-white version of green. All right, so now that looks pretty interesting. But now, if, if you notice, in a lot of glitch effects, what's happening is the mixture of the colors is getting distorted, and you wind up seeing a lot of weird little ghost shapes. And so, with selecting the blue group, I'm just going to lower the opacity just a bit. That looks interesting. Select the red and lower its opacity, and go to green and lower its opacity as well. So now, at this point with the background what I want is kind of the feel of the 1980s I really like the feel of the 1980s and I'm trying to modernize it and making it look fresh and look interesting so I'm going to just move all of my artwork just to a more interesting spot in the composition Now occasionally you're going to see me working on the background, different little background elements. This tutorial isn't about background, so I'm not going to really talk too much about that process. Okay, so at this point I'm starting to get really unhappy with some of the results that I've got. The image looks awesome, but the thing is, is I need to go back to my blue group, because this is basically the master group, and I need to go to the left and right glitches. So left, I want to select the move tool and move the glitches further to the left in order to make things just look more glitchy and less like nonsense is what I want to do. And so I'm just pressing and holding on the left arrow key and it's ever so slowly moving, but it's a very reliable way to make sure that it only goes to the left. I suppose you could just press shift and click and drag, but no, even even that has problems. Well, okay, you drag, click and drag and then press shift and that'll work. Okay, that's something. Then go to my right glitch and move it on out. That's looking pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and close the blue group. Let me go to the red group and see what I can do with the left and right glitch groups. Okay, and then go to my green and look at the left and right glitch groups. Oh man, that looks so cool. Look at that, okay. Okay, so I'm going to go into my blue group again, and uh, instead of the anchor layer, you can get rid of the bookmark object. It was that big rectangle. It really didn't serve any purpose instead of the anchor group, other than to be a bookmark to indicate a split where the left glitch stuff was to the right glitch stuff. But that doesn't really even matter at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom rectangle object and go to the top rectangle object. Press shift and click, and then I'm gonna press control J, okay? And I'm just gonna move these on top of the blue layer real quick so that I have them all nice, neat, and organized here, all right? Now, I'm just gonna make sure that I select all of them, and now I'm just gonna drag them all 
into the background group at the top of the stacking order. Now, what I'm going to do is I, I need to set these to normal. The blending mode, they need to be normal. So now they're appearing as their normal color, which was a very light blue color. But right now I'm happy with something like white, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I, I need to transform these, pressing Alt, so that all of them are essentially extending to the full length of the image. And now that I have that accomplished, I'm just going to start randomly selecting them, just kind of disorganized in, in the way that I'm doing it. Okay, I've reached the bottom here with them being randomly selected just kind of sometimes I select a few of them in a row and sometimes I skip a few and that's good so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it underneath one of these objects and then I'm going to scroll up a bit and move it above that object okay that way they're all instead of disorganized inside of the layers panel I can see them all right there and I'm going to change their color to red like a really hyper saturated red and let's play around with their opacity but some of these I think I selected too many of them uh, but that's fine I'll be revisiting that in just a moment I'm going to select all the ones on the top and I'm going to select a green color really obnoxious and then lower its opacity Okay, so that's cool. So now I'm just going to start selecting a bunch of them randomly again. Pressing control while I'm selecting. Awesome. And now I'm going to select a blue color. I'm thinking of a, a light colored blue. That looks pretty cool. But I'm not done now. I'm not done yet. Inside of this background layer, the thing is, is like not every glitch always has a multicolored strip going through. So I'm going to start randomly selecting a bunch of these inside of the background layer again and just randomly delete them. And I think that's a good little balance right there. And ultimately if you wanted to add text to this it would be pretty much the exact same workflow. So, so here you can see the final image. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. I added a little bit too much. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. I added a little bit too much. So glitchiness to it glitchiness to it so, so too many small objects but in the end i'm pretty happy with it i'm pretty happy with it so glitchiness to it glitchiness to it you can so, so image i'm pretty happy with it anyway. Anyways guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell or go ahead and follow me on Twitter. A link is supplied in the video description below. And if you'd like to check out any more of my content, feel free to click on anything appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.